It started with the, um, <clears throat> in North American bird, uh, the purple martin. And um, I, th I stumbled upon an obscure uh, record of it, of a 19th century un unverified sighting of the bird of the purple martin in Dublin. And that was in the Museum of Science and Art, which is the uh, National Museum now. And it was a sighting of the bird in the 1800s uh, in Dublin. And I, it, got me, it got me thinking about the Purple Martin. It got me thinking about the, the arduous and often catastrophic flights these birds make in migration. And a lot of it, I try to uh, bring about in this sculpture. Um, so the migrant, the, the, the purple martin then slowly started becoming this, this, this desperate migrant to me in search of landfall, you know, crossing the Atlantic from North America, um, having traveled far and through unimaginable hardship in search of safety. And, and, and so this purple monster became this migrant to me and I wanted then to use this story uh, to develop my sculptures. The sculpture is based on a bird trap and my work today, most of my work today is around movement. I'm a choreographer, I'm a movement artist, um, uh, and it's important for me that my sculptures explore the invisible forces that are resonant in them, expanding, dilating, pushing, stretching. Um, and they're, they're static sculptures, but I want you to be immediately aware of the forces that are working with them. And the bird trap for me was a perfect vehicle for this. It became a vessel for me to explore, to, 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 to mold and organize various forces um, that work on a migrant when they appear in a new country, these various forces. And I wanted to bring them to a state of equilibrium, uh, to, to a moment when, and, and to all the different forces that work on that sculpture that we, that you can sense through your body, um, both, both human and mechanical. I wanted to create a world, a border area world that at its coolest, at its most cool. You know, because I'm, a lot of my work as a choreographer, as a movement artist, as a sculptor is, is situated in border areas. Um, it, uh, and, um, and I work a lot with migrants, people who move across borders, who appear at border areas. And the Purple Mountain became this, this, this vehicle for me to, 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 to not only start building fake narratives, the same kind of things and tools that I use against migrants, but also to, to develop this, this what uh, to this this story about what happens to them when they appear at the border area, and I've been working with direct provision centers uh, for quite a while now, uh, over the last several years, and um, and the bird trap represents one of these centers, and I and I and I think of them as uh, a border area institution, and. And to me, they, they are like a trap in many different ways, the direct provision centers. It traps you as you move, get into the country, and it traps you for a long time beyond that. And the birds in these, in, in this particular sculpture are made out of jasmineite. They are the purple martins, wingless purple martins. I've actually taken the wings off them. And they're made out of a very compact, very heavy material. And, um, and that represents to me the body of the migrant. You know, um, whenever I am around border areas, I know what happens to my body. I want, I close up. I become as small as I can be, as a compact as I can 
appear uh, to to become invisible uh, to uh, uh, from the prying eye of staff authorities, you know, because I'm so anxious and so cautious, and I wanted all that to appear in the sculpture. During during the pandemic, I mean, we were very cautious in Ireland, and uh, rightly so. And and a lot of my work, I found looking back now, turned very much towards uh, the the lines that are drawn from my body about borders, about just being, uh, uh, just not being able to move beyond a certain distance, just not not being able to. Uh, um, um, not being able to, even even though you might not often travel far, but being told that you can't, uh, a certain a certain kind of curfew that's imposed upon you, uh, was it's the kind of body that I inhabit a, a lot, um, and so my work turns towards that. I did many different projects, and there was time. And, and space to do it. And so that's one. And the, the other thing was, and interestingly enough, um, for the first time, I started looking away from just showing in Dublin. So I showed in Linden Hall during the pandemic, uh, Linden Hall Art Centre, and I, I had the best experience ever. Uh, it, it, it gave me the permission so the pandemic gave me permission to show a way in smaller institutions. It's such an honor. Uh, and any, anywhere in the world, in Singapore, in Malaysia, wherever I've shown to be acquired by the national arts body or to be seen by them um, is a, an, import, an important milestone for any artist. Um, for me, especially in Ireland, of course, the Art Council is so active and so involved and perhaps one, one of the best institutions around the world in terms of its engagement with, uh, with the artists and, and its support um, and to be seen by them and to be acquired by them it was, was important for me. But, more so than anything else, I, I don't make my art for fame or fortune, but I want to be seen by my peers. Uh, and to me, being acquired by the Art Council was exactly that, to be seen by my peers to be doing good work.